Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome into the Clay Share Studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. We have a fun hand building tutorial prepared for you tonight. We're going to be making mug toppers. And I know people are like, what's a mug topper? It's a lid. It's a top for your mug. So basically a lid. And you can make these with the mug or you can make them after you make the mug or you can make them for mugs you already have. Doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to do it. Super, super easy. This is an intro level class. So if you want to get into making pottery, this is a great one to kind of dip your toes in the, well, I'd say water, but it's pottery and it's clay. So mud. <laughs> so I would suggest um, checking this class out. It's definitely one of my favorites for starting. And because it's free, you can go to clayshare.com and watch it. Just go and watch it. And of course, if you want more, I have over 300 tutorials on there. So you can sign up for our free seven day trial and check it all out. And if you love it, just stay with us and keep learning and making pottery and be part of our fabulous Clay Share community. Hi, Sherry. I see everybody's joining in. Hello, hello from wherever you are. Come on in and, you know, get yourself something nice to drink. It is cold here. It has been snowing all day long. Um, not much accumulation. Not, is it? Is it starting to? We got about an inch. You say an inch? Yeah, about an inch. That's about average for this time of year. You should get a little more, but, and I see Arlene's here from Boulder Junction, Wisconsin. Arlene, I bet you all have snow. Bet you got snow tonight. So this is going to be super fun and educational too. This is called edutainment. It means you're learning something and having fun at the same time. It's kind of like the idea that you're learning, but you don't even realize you are because it's so much fun. Uh, and I see a few folks asking, where am I? I am in the green mountains of Vermont. Although it's snowing, so they're the white mountains, but New Hampshire is called the white mountains. So we, we are the green mountains. Cause it's pretty green in the summertime. <laughs> Valmy, Mobile, Alabama, Deborah says. I bet it is. So these little guys right here, and you can see I got a bunch of them. This is how they work. And the whole idea behind these is you make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and you maybe are going to be doing stuff and you don't want it to cool off really fast. So you make these little guys and then you just sit it on, right? And so it keeps your coffee or tea warmer or hot cocoa warmer or longer. The other thing I love about these, and this is for my house, there's, there's a, two other things I love. One is I have cats. Anybody out there with cats? Because if you got cats, mine will get on the counter. Doesn't matter how many times I tell them no or put them off the counter, they get back up on the counter. And if I have a mug just sitting there, like this, this yummy mug of something sitting out, my kitty cat will go to smell it. And if it smells good, she might take a lick of what's in there. If it doesn't smell good, what does she do? She puts her paws in there and smacks it around and then is like, oh, that's awful. I hate that, I hate that tea, but I'm gonna defile it with my little kitty cat paws. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, they put their hands in it. And especially if I have like mint green tea, they love the smell of the mint. They're drawn to it and they will kind of drink it. I don't really want them to do that. So this is what you do. No, bad kitty. You cannot have my beverage. So that's the second reason. So we have it to keep our beverages warm. The other reason is to keep our kitty cat's paws out of our beverage. Also, if you have little doggies and you're sitting down on your sofa and you put this on your little side table there and your little doggy goes right over and the next thing you know, they have lapped up all your coffee. No, you put this on it and then they can't get in it. So that goes along with kitty cats. The last reason that I love these is because if it's summertime, or it doesn't even have to be summertime, but if there are flies or bugs or anything flying around, say you're sitting outside a beautiful summer morning, enjoying your cup of tea or coffee, you sit your mug down for a minute while you're relaxing and taking in the splendor of nature and you look over to get your cup of coffee and in it is a fly that has decided to try to enjoy your breakfast with you. No, do this, no fly. So this is shoe fly, right? Keep them out. So good for many reasons and they're easy to make. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different sizes. I mean, basically it's two little slabs that we attach. So you have your top and then the bottom of your topper, which holds it in, that's your little lip. And I just make them a couple different sizes. These right here, are hand built. So they'll work on hand built cups. These are wheel thrown. So it'll work on wheel thrown. Here's another wheel thrown. 
And so they don't have to only be hand-built mugs. They can be wheel-thrown, and they can work on commercial mugs that you have. And Peggy says her cats do the same thing. Now, I have also heard in the summertime, if you're drinking something cold and you want to keep them out, so maybe you have a, a lovely, a lovely um, drink at the end of the day, something nice and icy cold, and you're sitting outside again, and you want to keep anything from getting in your drink, you can just go ahead and put a mug topper on it, and then you don't have to worry about any of those pesky bugs getting in there. Or if you're sitting in your house having a, a, little, a little beverage and you don't want kitty or doggy getting in, you know, go ahead and stick that mug topper on. So not just coffee, tea, but anything you're drinking. Um, you might even want to use it for a glass of water because I know for me, same thing, glass of water. Kitty cat comes along and says, oh, thanks mom, thanks for that cup. She did it to me just the other night. I set my glass down on the coffee table and I turned and looked at something else. I turned back, she had jumped up onto the coffee table, had her face down in my cup. I had to go get a new cup of water. But if I put this on it, I wouldn't have that problem. So I see a lot of people have very, very similar experiences. <laughs> Right, and I see Janet says, great to put over your mug so you don't put your paintbrush in your coffee instead of your paint water, right? Although I don't condone eating or drinking in the studio, I won't say that I don't do it, because I do. I drink in the studio. Um, coffee and tea, mind you, is what I'm talking about. But I'll have my cup of tea out here when I'm glazing, and you know, you grab your, let me grab my brush, you grab your glazy brush and you'll be working on something, and next to your glaze water, is your, your tea, right? And so you go to rinse your brush off and you plop, next thing you know, you've plopped it in your tea. But when you, when you sit your cup down, if you put a mug topper on it, you're gonna stop, right? This is gonna stop you. So this is like a little safety, safety lid for your beverage. So anyhow, um, those are all great reasons for, ma for making these. They also are fabulous as stocking stuffers and gifts. So, if you're looking for something that you can make pretty quickly, don't need a lot of experience in making pottery to do these. They, they are one of the top things that I recommend. It's like my beginning potter's go-to class. These um, are one of them. My little trinket dishes is another. Intro to hand building is a great one. That's also free. So you could check that out. <laughs> Jeanette's old doggy does that too. I know. I know. So here is my slab that I, I rolled out. Jeanette says, I see it's purely for safety. Exactly. So I rolled this out on my slab roller. You can roll them out with a rolling pin. If you go check out my rolling a slab class, I show you how to roll out a slab. That's another free one. All about the free tonight. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the holiday spirit. I'm really promoting the free classes. So you roll your slab out and I cut my slabs up into sections and I will score them on these boards because they keep for, goodness, this was two weeks ago I rolled this out. So this slab, see how pliable it still is? And that's from two weeks ago. And you just lay it down on a sheet of plastic. This is the plastic you buy at the store to cover windows in the winter. So the window insulation kits, that's what this plastic is. And I usually buy a kit of that because I insulate the windows in the studio with it and use the leftover for this. But you lay it down on it, then you wrap your plastic up like this. And then usually I will put a little, another board on top to hold this down and that's it. And then it's, it's ready when I need it. Did we announce the winners of our military scholarship? We have not, that'll be next week. So we at Clay Share are both veterans, my husband and I. We are from a family of veterans. My father and his father both served. My brother is still in the Air Force. And we do a veteran scholarship and veteran caregiver scholarship. So you don't have to be a veteran. And the deadline for applications was the end of November. We're reviewing all of the applications and we'll announce the scholarship recipients next Wednesday. And they get a lifetime membership to everything on ClayShare except the paid workshops. The workshops are separate. So that's gonna be awesome and I will be sharing all the stories next week. All right, so here's our slab. Um, I would say this one is a, about a quarter of an inch thick. Go a little thinner, a little thicker, it's entirely up to you. This is a good starting point for thickness, and I'm just smoothing it off with this yellow rib. You don't share dishes with your pets, except your horses. They slurp your coffee right out of your mug. 
you know, sometimes you don't get to choose the sharing, right? That sometimes, are you, we want to switch to the top? Yeah. We're going to switch to the overhead, everybody who's watching. I'm going to zoom it out a bit. So everybody that's watching on Facebook, on ClayShare.com, on the apps, on Vimeo, and on YouTube, you all get the double view. Everybody on Instagram, I must apologize. You don't. You only get one view. But c come over to the other area and you'll, you'll see it. So we're smoothing this out because of a couple of reasons. One, it's getting rid of the canvas texture I have on the slab. And two, it's helping the clay particles. You know, clay is made up of a whole bunch of particles that are like plates, little clay plates. And they need to be in alignment. And so this helps to put them in alignment. It also helps smooth the clay out and actually makes it stronger. So if you find when you're making hand-built pottery and you go to take your cylinder and you roll it up and you're getting kind of cracking, try compressing your clay. Compressing the clay can really help. So keep that in mind. And I talk about that almost every time I roll out a slab. All right, so this one is good to go. If you find you've rolled out slabs and they're not as, as soft as you want them to be, you can kind of, see I'm smacking it, I'm waking it up. And this will actually, believe it or not, make the clay more plastic. So it'll be softer again. It's loosening it up. All right. So you can pick if you want to put a texture in your mug toppers or not. You don't have to. You can leave them smooth. But I like to use some texture. Often I will match the mug that I'm going to make the topper for, or I'll just pick something really cute. Like this is my holiday pin. It's little Deersies. This one is my Moroccan tile. This is like one of my absolute favorite pins. I don't know if you can see the detail in there that we have. There's some other pins that aren't my designs, but I still really like them. This one is one of mine though. This is my Southwest design. That's the image I used for tonight's broadcast. It was done in this design, but with different glazes. And then again, another view of my Moroccan tile. And then this is a little knit texture. We're going to make our mug toppers tonight using my sweater weather rolling pin. And yes, it will look like a sweater because I got a whole bunch of these mugs to glaze. These are my sweater mugs and I need to have mug toppers for them. So that's what we're doing. You love texture. Me too. Me too. All right, so we're ready to go. I'm going to roll my texture. If you find your clay is too thick at this point and you rolled it out on your slab roller. Check here. Sure. So did that get it? Is it better? It's having crazy time. Focus down here. Here. Let me give it something to focus on. Yeah. It has trouble. It has trouble because the clay and the board are so close to the same tone. So if you roll out your slab clay, your clay slab too thick, you can always thin it down a little bit. So I might just roll a little quickly. Move these guys out of the way. You know, just roll my rolling pin on it, and that just thinned it out a tiny bit more. I felt like it was a little too thick to work with for these. I mean, I've made them really thick before. And I've made them too thin. The problem is when they go too thin, they will warp. So just keep that in mind. Focus now. Good. We're in focus. I love it when we're in focus. So you just made a few of these a few days ago from my older YouTube video. Yeah, I do have this up also on YouTube. A lot of the free classes on ClayShare.com I did put on YouTube as well because I wanted you all to be able to get them everywhere you go, right? I'm all about easy access for education. So that's why I put it on there. All right, this rolling pin, um, my design, I drew this fabulous sweater texture pattern and Sharon Hoppy Designs makes them and sells them. I don't sell them, I just design them. And she's got a bunch of great patterns, mine and her own, so it's pretty fabulous. We're gonna go ahead and roll this in. And I just wanna give you all a tip when you're using a rolling pin. You know, you wanna make sure your, your pressure is down, not out. So if you're trying to get your texture in and you're pushing outward away from you, you're gonna have some issues. You need to be pushing down first and then roll out. So 
I am not, not, not super tall. <laughs> This board here and this countertop is average person's height. I'm about three or so inches shorter than the average person. So it's actually not a good height for me. So I will grab a, I have a very nice, safe, wide, flat step stool back here and I'll get on this and that'll help me get my downward pressure correctly. Or I work on my other work table, which is made for my height. So let's go ahead and roll this in now. When I look at this, I've got this one band that goes across and then I have my vertical elements. I wanna make it so that I can cut this area right here for the topper. I just love that. So I'm gonna start it about here. Um, I like to roll from the barrel for this. And if your clay is too dry, and pardon my head, yeah, this clay is a little drier than I like, you can have a little more difficulty rolling. If your clay is really, really soft, you can roll like crazy. Now let's just do for, um, as a clay lab experiment, right? We're always doing experiments. Let's see what happens if I roll it with the handles and I'm standing up. I just wanna see, just for fun. It's always about just for fun. So can we still see this? Everybody can still see this, right? Here we go. Ha, look at that. I actually feel like it rolls better from the handles than it does standing up and doing the walking with the barrel. Look at the difference. Look at that. Of course, I was putting more pressure on the edge, but it's entirely up to you. Now, I really find the areas where patterns line or don't line up very intriguing, but you can pick what you want. So we're gonna try it here. It's a little far away from me, so it was difficult for me to get the pressure, but you get how it's done. All right, so we're gonna release this. I'm gonna turn this this way. All right, here's the big important stuff. What do you need? Cookie cutters. That's it, cookie cutters. So this is a set made by Fox Run and I got them from Amazon. We have an Amazon shop, so you can buy a lot of the tools and supplies that you'll see me using from Amazon and get them shipped for free now I do have to disclose that we are affiliated with Amazon. Amazon like gives us a tiny bit of a kickback, but none of it comes from you, it comes from Amazon. And it's very small, so it's not like, you know, I'm like, hey, buy all my stuff on Amazon. It's just, if you're gonna buy the cookie cutters and these are the ones you're gonna buy, buy them through the Clay Share shop. You know, it helps. So we're gonna be using the four and a half inch, that's the large one, and Depending on what size mug you're going to be making your topper to fit, you want to think. If you're making it for a mug that has a little thrown top, you want to go with a smaller opening. So I would go with the three inch for my bottom, right? If, so we'll put that there. If I'm doing a bigger hand built piece, I would go with the three and a half. So it's entirely up to you. So when we look at let me find a bigger one. See how this one's bigger than this one? This is an older one. This is a newer one. I can just tell. This one I made just recently. This I made about a year ago. All right, here comes the fun part. Make sure you all can see good. Let me zoom in more. Can you zoom in more? You zoom in, you do the work. I just wanna, I wanna make stuff. You can use the round, smooth side, or you can use the ruffle side. Now, if you're worried about sticking, here's my magic st don't stick dust. My magic no stick dust. Um, it's called cornstarch. <laughs> All right. So you take your cornstarch. If you're, if you're worried about the cookie cutter sticking or anything metal sticking, right? Or plastic, because both those stick. And then you just lightly dust, yes, on top of the texture. It won't hurt the clay. It wouldn't hurt the clay if you decide to reclaim it either. The cornstarch will just break down. It's not even a big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and line this up how we want this to be. This is gonna be the top of my topper. So I want it to, mm, want it to look good, right? I want the top to, look fabulous. All right. So then you just reach under and grab it. Now I've got a board back here. 
and you're just going to sit this on the board. So that's one half, but we need our bottom. And so this is going to go in this mug here, right? So I'm going to use the, the three inch. I want to make sure I have plenty of wiggle room, but not too much. And if we look, I'm going to use, I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to use this bit of clay right here and I'm going to cut it without using cornstarch. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to use the smooth side. So I use the ruffled side for the top. And then I use the straight side or the smooth side for the bottom. And you can use the ruffled side for both or scallop side entirely up to you. But it's just up to you. It's whatever you want to do. Michelle said she just made a few of these two days ago from, yeah. And so you will go to Clayshare and get your cookie cutters. The only issue that makes Amazon a bit better is that you have Prime and it comes in two to three days. When you order other things, it takes two to three weeks. Right. I, I agree. I'm, I have Prime as well. It makes things much faster, doesn't it? All right. So here's, I'm going to show you some important step. If you're worried about warping, because warping with slabs is an issue, you're going to turn this over and I'm going to drop it. And I'm actually going to drop it where on the board it's going to stay for drying. So you ready? I don't know if I showed that in the class. See how I dropped it? So what I've done is I've sort of shocked the clay a little bit. I'm realigning those clay plates into a flat form. So any wiggling or shifting it has done has been negated. And now we have a clay slab that wants to be flat. And you can do the same thing with this, like that, except we will lift it up because we have to slip and score. But doing that can really help if you're finding your little small things like this are warping. Now, I also have a drying tip for y'all too. So we've got a little, little secret. It's actually not a secret, I just tell everybody, so. So I'm gonna slip and score the back. Some of your top, toppers warp and some don't from the same batch. So Charlie, it could be clay memory. You know how we're, we're pulling this up after it's been rolled out. We're putting texture in and we're, we're cutting it out and we're, sometimes it sticks again and we have to pull it up again. So those things, every time we touch the clay, every time we twist it or torque it, we're creating clay memory. So the clay is gonna remember all those things that happen and sometimes they come back to haunt us. So that's what's happening with every single thing you're, thing you're ever making with clay is the clay memory. And so if you become really conscious of your practice and how you're making, it can help you eliminate where those things are coming from. Like, you know, if you know you roll it out and your clay stuck a lot and you had to peel it up a lot and you created a really strong curve in that clay, that can come back to haunt you. So look, right here, I'm just using flat of my palm. I'm not crushing in there. I'm just using the flat to evenly compress that so that it's joined and then if you get any little bits squeezing out, any slip or anything squeezing out, you're just going to go ahead and I like to use these color shapers to smooth them out, but you use whatever you have on hand. And then the last thing I do is I just take my finger and I'm just pressing down lightly on the side to get rid of any sharp edges that we have. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So the mug topper is built. It's pretty easy. It's one step more complicated than making a coaster. It's like one step away from a coaster. Now, if you decide you want to switch patterns, you're like, ah, oh, that's great. I made that pattern. I want to do a different pattern. You can go ahead and get a new slab or you can just take this slab and you can smooth it out and basically get rid of the texture. If your clay is too thin, you might not have room. <laughs> you know, to press down and get another bit of texture in there. But sometimes I will be working for a while on a big slab and I'll decide oh, I want to switch patterns. And so I'll just do this and then I can do another pattern. So if you're hand building a mug and want to make the topper at the same time, would you use a cookie cutter that you use for the mug base for the inside of the topper? I, so Barbara, that's such a good question. So say we use, we're hand building a mug, right? And you use a four inch, for your base, which is what we use for this, this particular mug right here, 
I actually would go smaller. I would do three and a half because four inches is going to be too big. You want to go four and a half here and I would actually do three and a half here. You could even do three if you're concerned for that. This one, here's one with three and that fits fine. Let's find, this is one with three and a half on the four and a half and that fits perfect. So do you see how we have a really nice fit? Now, these are not travel mug lids. They aren't sealed with silicone. They won't keep your beverage from spilling if you hit a bump. They're just cute little mug toppers. That's, that's all. They're not meant to be anything more than that. They're not meant to do a job of anything more complex than just being cute. Um, I know it's the holidays, but let's do the Southwest pattern because I love it. It's one of my favorites. I don't think I actually have any Southwest mugs to put these on, but guess what? I can make some. So the beautiful thing about these is you don't have to make your mug and your toppers at the same time. If you're hand building and using my hand building class as your template for making the mug, this size topper will fit perfectly with my hand built mug class. So you're not gonna be um, making a piece and be like, oh, it doesn't fit. No, it, it's gonna fit. All right, so we rolled this out, right? Now look at, see how I'm torquing this by lifting it up? You have to release it. That's the only way to do so. And that could be clay memory. That could create a cupping, but we're gonna get rid of it, remember? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut out a bunch of these. And I didn't use the cornstarch. I'm gonna show you the difference. See, it really, not a big deal. So we're gonna put that up there for now. That'll be a bottom, let's do this one. I think I can get three from this sheet of clay. And then what you do with all the scraps, just like baking cookies, you're gonna go ahead and wedge them up, just like cookie dough, and roll it out again. Do I think using products like Pam could cause a kiln fire? Oh, that's an interesting question, Catherine. I don't think so. It would, it would take a, it, it would, it, yeah. it would take a gallon of it. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been using Pam for years as a resist on my everything pottery that I make and I haven't had any problems. I, I just, I don't think it could happen. I've never heard of it. So we're going to go ahead and cut out what will become the bottoms and then we'll assemble these three. But you see how fast this can go? I like to cut out all my tops first and then we'll cut out all the bottoms. I wonder if I can get one more. One more top out of that one. Oh, it's, 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 yes. <laughs> can it, can it, can it? Yes. Yes, it can. I'm going to have a fifth one. I have to figure out where to put that. And then I need a little, I need more, I need more pattern, right? I need more surface here. So let's go ahead and do this. And we'll release, and this will become our bottom. I like that. We'll do it there. And then your clay for recycling this, you know, it, if it's gotten a little stiff, just wedge it up into a ball or kind of fold it up like this. Dip it in your working water that you're working with. Let it sit for a few minutes and then wedge this whole thing. It'll soften up really nicely and it'll be great to use this roll out another slab. You don't have to have any waste with hand building. You can keep reusing the clay over and over and over until you, there's none left. Will I help with advice on adding silicone? I would not add silicone to these, no. Um, if you want to use a silicone top, um, they, they do sell some like rings and stuff for it, but um, these right here aren't meant for that, no. So here we have our little guys. We're gonna drop them again. And then flip this one over, dropping it. Dropping it, we got, we got five. Can we get one in there? You shouldn't, shouldn't move it after you drop it, just so you know. Because once you've dropped it, you've kind of reset that clay, right? Will we fit? It will, but I, I can't drop it. We're gonna have to try. Ha, got it on there, but, oh no, we got room. Look at that. All right, <laughs> I was able to drop them. Didn't know if it was gonna happen or not. And then here's our bottoms which I'm just gonna drop off to the side. Did 
Did I forget to make a bottom for the last one or did I accidentally wedge it up into my clay? I've only got three bottoms here. All right, so I'll roll out some more in a second. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do with that last bottom? Mystery bottom. You bought some tops for travel mugs, but still can't work out how to get them to fit. So you're gonna have to measure how big the tops are and measure the size you're making. You know, you're gonna have to figure out your shrinkage on your clay. You're gonna have to make your piece so that after it shrinks with a shrink ruler, so that you know what diameter that is, so it'll fit. Now, a lot of them, those silicone commercial travel tops that you can get, you can go ahead and have a little range, little wiggle room on those. So you're not stuck with just one diameter. Put this one on too. And the slip I'm using, it's actually made with magic water. That's what's in this little dish right here. And you see I slip and score the bottom and then I slip and score. The, so I'm slipping scoring the bottom of the bottom and the bottom of the top and then I attach them, line it up. And sometimes you hear a little squishing sound and that's just your clay squishing out. I can't believe I got so like caught up in recycling the clay that I squashed my slab. Now I gotta roll out a new little bit so we can make the bottom of this topper over here. There we go. So these are done, but this one needs its bottom. So let's go ahead and grab the clay. So this is getting a little drier. I'm running the heat in the studio too, so. Can I, <laughs> someone explain the use of Pam? Um, I think Kevin's gonna type it in, but it's a good question that Vicki asked. So we use it as a resist. If you're using anything silicone or plastic, oftentimes the clay will um, really stick to it. So you need a release. And silicone works as a great release. I mean, um, Pam works is a great release for silicone. All right, ready? We wedge this. Now we're just gonna tap it out. This is just wedging you know, a tiny little bit up. I would recommend rolling out a bigger slab if you're gonna make these. Don't do this this way, but this is the I forgot a bottom. So I've gotta come up with a replacement right now. Get my rolling pin. Now, if you have scrap clay, and I think in, in the class, I really talk about that a lot. If you're making a bunch of projects and you have some scrap clay, if you have enough scrap clay around that you could just go ahead and make one or two of these, every time you're making, you can easily have quite a few available if you're gonna sell them at markets, online, if you're gonna go ahead and give them as gifts. And you always have a little, a little stash of them available. Yes, Madeline, we can use cornstarch. Um, the thing about cornstarch, though, it's hard to get it in a lot of those really intricate silicone molds. So you can use it, but it, it can be a little tricky. So there we have the bottom of our last little guy. And so, you know, I didn't even share the exciting clay share news that's happened today. So you all know, um, we have been planning on doing a workshop with Adam Field for a while now, and we just got the workshop page up. If you go to clayshare.com, we have a link leading you over to Clayshare resources, right? Where you can sign up for it. Or sign ups on clayshare.com now. Yeah. But you can go ahead and sign up there for his workshop. It's gonna be January 16th and 23rd, two three-hour sessions of making. That's six full hours of instruction. Crazy good. If you don't know Adam Fields Pottery, you need to check him out. He is an amazing potter. I've been friends with him for years and I'm so excited. If you took Doug Peltzman's workshop with us, you will love Adam Fields workshop. Adam and Doug are really good friends. Um, you know, I, I found Doug through Adam so we have to thank Adam for that. And Doug's workshop was a huge hit. The most, 
the most watched workshop we've ever had. <laughs> and uh, Adams, I believe, is going to be just as exciting, and that'll be in January. So if you need something else to ask Santa for, right, or you know another potter you want to give a gift to, give them the gift of an Adam Field workshop. And the great thing about all of our clay share workshops is you get access to them forever. So you sign up, you watch it, you want to watch it again, you want to watch it again and again, want to watch it 400 more times, go ahead. You can watch it as long as you want forever. And my premium members, don't pay full price. Premium members out there, listen up. You save 20%. So don't sign up and pay full price. Kevin is going to send you an email with a link that you can sign up through. Sending that email out tomorrow with the big workshop announcement. And you premium members will be able to save that 20%. If you cannot find that link or you want to know more about it, let me know and I'll take care of it for you. But I'm super excited for Adam's workshop. Oh, you know, the overhead just shut off. Oh, because somebody didn't plug it in. I can't reach it. <laughs> Our overhead camera just said, nope, you're done, lady. And okay. I, I can't reach it because I am not tall enough. That's, that's the um, reason I use a step stool. Yeah, Chris, his work, I have to tell you, I... On my 12 gifts for potters, Kevin's shaking the heck out of that stand. It's just going nuts. Can I help you here? Can I help you there? Can I hook you up? Yeah, I can help him out. Um, so on my 12 gifts for potters, you know my list that I do every year? Oh, one of them is a piece of work from a potter you admire, right? And do you know whose piece of work from a potter I admire is on my list? I bet you all can guess. I bet you know. Me. Yes, yes, it's you. The man who's never made a pot in his life. No, it's not him. It's Santa. Adam Field. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love to get a piece of his. Santa, if you're listening. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, um, he's fabulous. He's a great guy. You know, not only is a fabulous potter, he's just a great person. So we are really excited to have him come on board and do a workshop. And the fact that it's six hours long, six hours, super good. Lorelai's like battery exhausted, aren't we all? No, <laughs> it's usually plugged in and for whatever reason it wasn't plugged in tonight, but yeah, battery exhausted. All right, so once you've smoothed these guys out and signed up for your Adam Field workshop, you're going to want to dry them, and I leave them upside down just like they are. And I take another board. So this is three-quarter inch birch plywood. You get it from your hardware store or lumber supply store. And right there, just like that. Ta-da! So you're just going to let it set like this and dry, and that's all. <laughs> Lisa says, watch out several Santas. No, other Santas don't listen. <laughs> the only Santa that should listen is the one in the room with me. <laughs> I don't want other people's Santa doing, doing that. Um, not that I would mind, because if you've seen Adam's work, I mean, is it the worst thing on the planet to get more than one of his pieces? No, no, it's not. No, it's gorgeous. Um, I will actually say his work's breathtaking. Um, I really admire anybody who carves with such precision as he does. And his... So... You all know me, my work has a lot of layers. I put a lot of stuff. We do, you know, I do Mishima, I do Scrafito, I do underglaze transfers, I do decals, I do laser decals, which we're gonna be doing laser decals in the primetime broadcast tonight. So that's coming up next for my premium members. I do commercial decals, I do gold luster, I do all kinds of stuff on the surface. So Adam's surfaces are just these gorgeous carved surfaces. I hope you're on the front camera because I'm talking to it. You need paint. <laughs> so, um, you know, his surfaces are just elegant, breathtaking, beautiful porcelain pieces with graceful carved lines. It's just, it's stunning. So for me, he's the kind of potter that if, um, you know, uh, I wasn't making my work, I would be wanting to make his work because it's gorgeous. So, and I'll be talking more about that workshop as we get closer to it. We are what, five weeks away from his workshop? So no worries, you got time to sign up. So here they are. They're just gonna dry like this. 
that's all. And then when it comes time to glaze them, so you bisque fire them, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and glaze them. This one, I just glaze fired right here. You notice I don't glaze the backs at all. Not at all. No, 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 we'll do the front. I don't glaze the backs at all. I leave them just the regular raw clay. You don't need to glaze the backs. If you want to glaze them, you can, but you'll have to fire them up on stilts and you will get three little bumps in your glaze. You just sand those bumps down. So you can, you can fire them, um, but be aware they could warp because when they're just sitting, when something like this is just sitting on three little prongs, this edge right here, it, it could fold a little bit. It could warp a tiny bit. So keep that in mind um, when you're making these. Now, I would suggest you use food safe glaze because you're gonna be using these with food. Although no food's going on here, it's just the idea that, you know, it's gonna be around food wear, mugs and cups and such. So just go ahead and um, glaze it with a food safe, so I, safe glaze. So I see a price on the workshop. So how our workshops work is it's, we pay, um, well actually the registration is $15 an hour of instruction. That's how much they cost. So if someone comes on and teaches a workshop for Clay Share that's only an hour long, it's $15. Now out of that $15, we give the instructor half. All, we give our premium members a 20% off. That comes from our half. And then we pay all the expenses. So Clay Share, us, we get this little tiny bit, but our workshops aren't so much about us making money. It's about helping out all of the ceramic artists and teachers out there that haven't been able to teach their workshops this year. You know, many of them, I know myself included, had multiple workshops scheduled that we all had to cancel. And I know a lot of people are feeling that and it's hurting. And this is a great way for us to bring artists in so that you can one, meet new artists, but two, so we can help them recoup that loss of those workshops, because that's a huge thing. Many potters make most of their living from teaching workshops. You know, you, you sell your pots and yeah, you make a living off of that, but teaching is a huge part of that as well. And traveling to do workshops is a great way to meet people and to just be part of the clay community. So by doing these workshops, we're letting artists come in that you might not know or be familiar with, so you can get to know them and they can be part of our clay share community as well. And it also is a great way for us to help them out. So that's why we're doing this workshop series and we're gonna continue to try to bring you one new workshop every month. The prices and content will vary. Uh, Adam is a wheel thrower and a carver. So he's gonna be talking about that. In February, we have Amy Williams doing a workshop and she is all about surface decoration. So her workshop is gonna be about an hour and a half long and maybe two hours and it's going to be a one day workshop and it's all going to be a decorating the surface she's going to walk you through a project she's going to have a template for you so you'll have all those things ready for her class in february and march we're just going to have to wait and see i've got a couple of people i'm speaking with for march but i don't want to let any cats out of the bag so we're just gonna but you'll be knowing soon what's going on so anyone know if you can use anything to write on stilts that won't fire off I'm not sure I understand your question, Michelle. Can you use anything to write on the stilts? So you wanna actually write on the stilts so that you know what cone they are? Like for your own labeling information? Um, yeah, use a, one of these, let me grab one. A, this is my poor beat up Amico underglaze pencil. You could also just use underglaze and a brush and write on it because the, the kiln stilts will fire to five, six, 10, whatever temperature, oh, five, whatever you're going to. But the black one, this is the brown. The black one goes to 10, the brown goes to five. So just keep that in mind. Use the black though. I don't know where my black one is, it ran off. Something happened to it. Set your cookie on the mug topper. You could do that for firing, right? If you're worried about dripping, but you can't have glaze because it will bond to the cookie. Oh, right. I, I thought she meant like, um oh yeah yeah no 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 like stroof waffle like a stroof waffle yes i didn't say that i can't believe i forgot you're a hundred percent right no absolutely positively and i think in the class i mentioned that i don't know but i needed to if i didn't yes if you have a stroof waffle if you don't know what that is go get one it's a yummy light thin wafer cookie with like caramel in the middle so good you put that on top when you're having a cup of tea as your tea is steeping and it's nice and warm and the heat comes up into 
your mug topper and it warms your little stoof waffle and then you eat it. Mm, so good. But you could do it with cookies, you could do it with brownies, you do it with anything. I mean, honestly, I feel like this is something you need to test out. You need to go out and buy a stoof waffle, a couple cookies, some brownies, maybe some turnovers, maybe a donut, mm, some croissants. I mean, I think you should get a bunch of pastries and I think you should test them out, right? Maybe, or maybe you just do it like one a day or maybe you have a pastry testing day and you just see how they work. But <laughs> I'm all on board trying out lots of different things to see how warm they get on the mug topper. But yeah, yeah, I can't believe I didn't say that. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Be so good. So uh, Jenine says, what's the cost? Of it's a six hour workshop. Adam Fields workshop is six hours long. You get six hours with him. That's three hours on one Saturday and three hours on the next. Three hours on the 16th and three hours on the 23rd. And it's not just those six hours one time. You get those six hours forever. So the thing is, if you took Doug Peltzman's workshop, you might have, if, if you, when you were signing up for it, so I'm talking to everybody who took it, and you guys can chime in here and tell me who took it, you might have thought, oh, I don't know if this workshop's for me. I don't know if I'm going to get that much out of it for the price. Tell me, did you not get more than you thought? Because I know I watched it, and I've been making pots for 20 years, and I learned things. I don't even make pots, and I was glued to it. Yeah, Kevin doesn't even make pots, and for the whole time straight, we were both like, oh my goodness. He talked about so many things other than just the handle part. He did throw some pots. He did put on a spout. I mean, he did a lot of things in that workshop, and Adam will be the same. There's more than just uh, the things they say in the description of what they're going to teach is just the tip of the iceberg of what actually happens during these workshops. You get so much more out of them. And you know, one thing we do here at ClayShare is we make sure we bring you the best in workshop instructors. Like that's really important. I know there's other um, online ceramic teaching options out there and we are all about quality, although we have quite a lot, so we have quantity, but quality for us is number one. We are all about giving you the best experience, the best possible online ceramic education out there is with us and we do this because we love what we do and we want you to love it as well and it means everything you know both of us being former military we're very detail orientated that's part of it me being an instructor you know i taught at the university level so I, I feel like you know the way that i teach i bring a lot of information because i want you all to learn and have fun while you're doing it so can you go back and buy our past workshops that is such a good question, Janet. Thank you for asking. And Kevin was going to comment. Yeah, he did. Yes, you can. You can always go back at any point. These workshops will be available forever. You can buy them and you have them always. So we currently have a practical glaze chemistry workshop. If you want to start glazing and learn how to make your own glaze, that's with Drew Seymour. We have Get a Handle on Handles with Doug Peltzman. That is an amazing one. And now we have Adam Fields Workshop. Do we have a title? Just Adam Fields Workshop? No. We don't have a no. title. It's the Adam Field Workshop. I don't know if we need it. Did we need a title? Yeah, we have a title. We have a title. You're, you're, I'm like, like, you're like going down the road of having no title, and I'm like, no, that's not the case. We have a title. Like, yes, we don't have a title. We don't need a title. You, Adam doesn't do need a title. We don't have a title. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everyone what it is. Lisa said she took pictures with her phone during the presentation so she would have a quick reference. Lisa, I do that all the time. Take a photo, you know, of the screen while you're watching somebody make something. I mean, it's the same as if we're there in person, right? If we're there making pottery together or you're watching someone in person, we all would have our phones out taking pictures, right? You can take a photo of the screen. It works great. If you're on your computer, you can do a screen capture, even better quality. So, yeah, um, yeah right and here. Alexandra says, connecting with potters like this is priceless. It is. And the thing is, while you're in the workshop, you're able to ask questions of Adam. You know, well, he's going to have a conversation with you. It's not one-sided. Um, you know, when you're watching my classes that I film and we put up, I don't have you there to ask me questions. I'm just teaching. And so we do have interaction, but you can't really ask me during the class like you can here. Now, these workshops are live, so they are broadcast live, but then they go up and you can watch that replay over and over and over. And if you miss the live, that's okay. You can still ask questions and we can forward them on to the presenter. So it's not like that's it. You can't have any more conversation with that instructor. It's no, you ask and we will find out for you. 
and I see it's up there. Thank you, AdamFieldPottery.com. Judy, thank you, thank you. Right, and I see you always get ideas from other potters. It's so true, no matter how long you've been making pottery, or I, I won't, I will never think that I know too much to not take a workshop. I'm always learning. I love learning. I just took a workshop last weekend, an online workshop with a potter. The weekend before I took a two-part one, I never stop learning. And you know, I may never make work like theirs, but I'm learning. There's always something I glean out of those experiences. And also there's other people taking that workshop and when we comment, they see your comments and that creates also a dialogue between the other participants. And that way, like with ClayShare, we have the um, ClayShare groups, right? We have our clay sharers, which is our public group. And then we have our private group for premium members. You know, this is something we all share together on those communities. So we can talk more about these workshop experiences, what we learned and everything. So it's all very good. Have I ever tried mica powder and clear glaze at cone 06? Charlene asked. I haven't, but Charlene, it will work. You can actually put it in glazes all the way up to cone five, cone six. You might even be able to go to cone 10 with the mica. But yeah, you can use it. Um, uh, where's that piece? Did I bring that? There's the title on the screen for you, Dave. On the screen. Oh, Nature, Tradition, Cultivating Inspirations in Clay from Adam Field. So I'm looking for my, ah, this is Cosmic Tea Dust, which is a glaze from Amico. And it has mica in it. I don't know if you can see it. They also have Adventurine, which is another glaze from Amico's Potter Choice line that has mica in it. And um, is that it? Is it just those two? But it has mica. And the Cosmic Tea Dust is a really nice one to put on top of this glaze, which is Smoky Merlot. So if you do Smoky Merlot and Cosmic Tea Dust, you get this really lovely deep Merlot color with the brown or speckles. It creates a really nice glaze combo. And I've done that on a planter or two. Alrighty, so I think that's all we got for tonight. Wait, wait, wait. Is my sale, Kathy asked, is my sale over? Kathy, yes, the sale happened in three minutes. It was crazy. I did put some, I put 19 pieces up for sale. They sold out in three minutes. Um, we only, we open our sales up for our premium members first, and then it goes to everybody. But it, my, it was gone in three minutes, but if you didn't get anything of mine, it's okay. I will be doing more sales. I don't know if I'll have another one before Christmas, but I have, you know, I have a lot of pots that, as many of you know, I'm moving in January. We've bought a, a little farmhouse, just about 40 minutes away from where we are now. We'll be selling this house and I'll be moving the studio and everything. I don't really wanna move all the pots. So I will be doing between now and probably April, many little sales of my pieces so don't worry you'll be able to get something and I'm making more pieces all the time so there'll be pieces available um, I wish I could make more faster for you all but there'll be pieces and um, I will post more information about that as it happens what is the best clay for hand holding mugs Kathy I think any uh, really you can use most any clay I love Laguna B mix 5 without grog I just love that smooth clay. That's the clay that I've used here. That's this clay, this beautiful light buff color clay. That's this clay here. You can see the color of the clay. It's a really nice plastic smooth clay and it's my favorite. I all admit B mix is my favorite clay. So that's my go-to. So if anybody asks me what's my favorite clay for just making pottery, I'm going to say B mix. Lagoon is not a sponsor. They could be if they want to, but they're not a sponsor. <laughs> I do love their clay. Um, so I would use, use their clay no matter what. Alrighty. So sell a French press. Brenda, I don't have any right now made. I'd have to make some. That's, that could happen. It could happen. <laughs> but you know what? You all can make your own French press with my French press class. It's a hand building class on clayshare.com. I walk you through all the steps on what you need to know and how to do it to make your own French press. So you can make one, but I'll see what I can do. I'll put it on my list, okay, hon? <laughs> All right, am I gonna have a sale on ClayShare subscriptions at some point? We did just have a sale. Um, we sent out emails 
two, three emails. We put it up on ClayShare.com. We put it up on Instagram. We put it up on Facebook. We put it up everywhere. So we just had a huge cyber sale started last Sunday to this past Sunday. So it was a big sale and we put it all over the place. Um, will we do another sale? I don't know, you guys, you guys waiting for a sale? I will tell you the sale is good, but it's not as good as subscribing for a year membership. You actually save more money if you sign up for a year. Just saying, but it's a good way to try it for only a few months, right? So we'll see, maybe we'll do another one. All right, Wendy needs to eat, she just told me. She just said that. Wendy, you need to go eat. Are any hand builders available for classes? Charlotte, we, may ha we might have some hand builders. Um, I've asked a few people, so I would love to get a hand builder in because we've done a lot of wheel throwing. Well, we have done two wheel throwing. It would be nice to have a hand builder. So yes, they're on my list. The tea dust glaze is the same color as my hair. I got lucky with that, didn't I? Can match the glaze to my hair. How many potters out there have a glaze that matches their hair? Me. It's pretty close. I don't have mica in my hair, but that could easily be fixed. We could put glitter on for the next broadcast and, and spray it all over the, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> all right, so I think we got it all. Um, you missed me mentioning on ClayShare, where do you find to sign up for Adam Fields six hours class? So we're gonna be sending out an email tomorrow. If you're a premium member and you don't have the discounted link or the discount code, don't sign up yet because you can save. Um, you can go to ClayShare.com, scroll down to the bottom and sign up. You put it down at the bottom or did you put a link at the top? The link is at, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom. See, I ask you, look at me like, what are you talking about, lady? I, I'm, I'm, I was trying to decipher if you meant link for the class overall or link for the code. There's no link for a code. No, there's there. no link for the code. The link for the actual class is at the bottom on ClayShare.com, not on the app. You got to go to the actual ClayShare.com in your browser. You got to type that in and you scroll on down to the bottom and you'll see the workshops right there. That's it. Julia makes the mug toppers for all of her classes, but she makes a foot like I do on my plates and use them as a coaster as well as a topper. See, brilliant, it's a great way to do it. Certainly can put a foot on the bottom and then you've got a little mini flat plate, you've got a coaster and you've got yourself a mug topper. Got all three, built into one, totally. And I see some questions about keeping my house. Um, Starlin said, because I had talked about trying to keep this house here and the new house, but it comes down to, I need to sell this so I can have the money from selling this house so I can have a studio at the new house. Now, if I win the lottery, I will keep both ho keep this house, but I don't think I can do that. Maybe I can, I'll try. <laughs> um, we shall see, right? Time will tell what happens with all things. So anyhow, remember when you make these, Put the board on top, let them dry. I let them dry all the way this way. Once they're bone dry, bisque fire them, and then go ahead and glaze fire them. The last thing I do to these, and I'm glad I just remembered, is I have my own little, it's called a chop or a stamp. Chop is, you know, what we call our signature stamp with my initials carved in it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna basically sign these this way by pressing my stamp in to the clay on the back here. There, so these are signed, they're done. So I don't have to do anything else to them except glaze them when they are out of the glaze kiln. All right, everybody, have a fabulous evening. I will see my premium members at 6.15 Eastern time. So just a few more minutes from now. Next week, we'll be announcing the recipients of the Clay Share Veteran and Veteran Caregiver Scholarship. So please come and find out about that. And um, that's all I got this week. So y'all take care of yourself, be well, and I'll see you next Wednesday.